Doc McGee back in the early days with Bon Jovi and Scorpions and Motley Crue. It's a big, important part of the mix. Um, another important part of the mix is having great songs. I listened to a bunch of your stuff over the last couple days, and you've really kind of dialed in. We talked about it a little bit earlier about your point of view of speaking to these folks out there that are, are maybe lost trying to find themselves. And I saw a post, you know, a question that was posted on the chat board for you guys, I didn't know you were going to be here, but it had something to do with the fact there was a gal who had had some issue with cutting and, and so forth. And she wondered, I think I'm, I'm paraphrasing her question, about your being conscious of those people that are, that are outsiders, the losers that are trying to find their way. Can you talk to that a little bit? You know, um, I think it, it just stems from the fact that all of us in the band were uh, troubled kids in a way. You know, we were all kind of the... The, the rough kids or the outcasts or whatever, um, I never w never faced uh, cutting or self-harm. Um, I never, I, I fortunately never really had that, but I, I certainly dealt with, like any kid I dealt with, sort of the depression of being different, and I knew what that was. And so um, very early on, I kind of took the stance that I wanted to write songs and to kind of create a community uh, feeling for our audience. And, and in a large way, you know, I grew up idolizing bands like Kiss and my escapism and my, my way out of the kind of drudgeries of my life was through bands like Kiss and Motley Crue and the Misfits and these bands that I listened to that had this sort of us-against-them mentality. And it was that feeling of community that really turned me on to rock music in the first place. And so I think that how, how important the community idea was and, and creating something that could give people a chance to escape from the problems, um, it was integral to, to the band. And, and having that connection with our fans, not every band in the world has that. Um, there's a lot of great fans out there, but I would put the Black Hill Brides fan base up against any of them simply because I know how unified and strong the, the fan base really is. Um, again, it, it's hard for me to, to speak to the idea of self-harm because I'm, I'm fortunate that it's something that I've never been affected by, but I can certainly tell that, you know, to my best knowledge, it seems as if the people that are doing that are in their darkest moments and they feel like that's their only way of getting out. And we've always said that you know, you should never hurt your number one fan, and you are your number one fan. You yeah. know, at the end of the day, nobody cares about you as much as you do. And if you can avoid hurting yourself, you can really create something beautiful and take that emotion and, and angst and turn it into art or, or you know, something that is um, positive in your life. Well, I think it, it's, it's powerful stuff there, folks, because, you know, I think it's one of the things that, that, that the, the power of music is that it, it can make a difference for people. And I've gotten so many emails over the years from my guys in Incubus, people sending me a note that said, I was going through a difficult time. Your band, your music helped me get through it. And I think what you guys are doing out there is awesome, man. And I'm very impressed with the way you guys are doing it, Andy. And I really appreciate you calling in today. And I'm looking forward to coming out and seeing you play here. So you guys starting up June 15th at the uh, Warp Tour. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, Blasco will uh, will be along every day, and where I'm going to play his beard on stage. That's a new <laughs> part of the show. <laughs> Save a few scraps for me if you cut it off, okay? You can see I'm a little bit needy.